For the past 14 years, Increasing Hope has been a financial help and guidance to many people in the low country and beyond. In this edition of Quentin's Post-Ups, I sit down with the CEO of Increasing Hope, Dorfield Bernique, one-on-one. -on -one. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Post-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. And listen to this interview later on iHeartRadio. Dorfield Bernique. It's so good to see you. Good to see you too, Quentin. Oh, I appreciate this greatly. I know the last time I interviewed you for Quentin's Close Ups was probably four years ago. Oh my goodness. You know, I think it was actually longer. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go back and double check again. Yeah. 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 How are you? I am great. I'm great. We're doing very well. Yes. You talk about doing well. Obviously, Increase Hope, your financial literacy services, is celebrating its 14th year. 14th year of service, yes. When you look back to 14 years ago to now, what plays in your mind? Well, I, I think it's the, the, the challenges of overcoming the, I think, the, uh, the idea that only certain people need help in the area of their finances or only, you know, these people need this type of help, whereas financial education, financial capability, it spreads across all social economic boundaries. And so the services that we actually offer are for everyone in the community. Community. Yeah. You talk about the community. What is it like to serve this community in 2019? Well, um... Again, you, I go back to what our obstacles are. Mm -hmm. That in 2019, our, our society is very, very focused on secular things, material things, possessions, and sometimes the, the status of their finances don't always dictate or allow for what the wants are, for what the, the look that you want to perceive. And in, in, in 2019, we're very commercialized. Mm -hmm. Very, very commercialized, which has led our community to have a lot of debt. And to use services and to use means to achieve that status or that look or whatever it is that they're looking for, they've used debt and the mismanagement of their finances to get there. Mm -hmm. That's what 2019 looks like. And I know that just recently you had an interview with Tamika Stenbridge, the executive director of Free, what is it? D Free. D Free Global yes. Foundation. Uh -huh. And obviously you talked about how to move from debt and delinquencies uh -huh. to deeds and deposits. Yes. How do you do yes. that? Um, by changing your mindset, by changing your attitude, by changing your behavior, and even just the psychological things that have taken place in your life by addressing those things. And so what we find is that it's a money mindset. It has to be mind over money. Mm -hmm. And so if we're going to change our behavior, if we're going to change the results that we're going to get, we first have to deal with those things, the, the root of our problems. And so addressing, you know, do I shop because I'm lonely? Am I an impulsive buyer? Uh, did I see grandmother or grandfather or mother do things a certain way? These are the things that have to be addressed if we're going to address the debt, delinquency, and deficits that we experience in our lives. What are those other problems that we're having financially? The other problems that we're having, well, we're overspending. We're just living beyond our means, you know. Again, try to achieve the status. Sometimes it's just that we don't have good money management habits. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're paying your bills late, or maybe you're accruing not sufficient fund fees. And so those are some of the things that we are experiencing that cause our problems are, are simple and can be rectified by going back and dealing with the mindset, the behavior, the attitude and those life experiences that we have that we don't realize we're still carrying with us right now. And those are the things that are causing us to uh, make the choices and the decisions that we're currently making. And obviously, uh, Monday was tax day. Everybody filed theirs. So yes. I had to file a tax extension. Uh -huh. but for those people who receive their tax refunds, mm -hmm. what are some good tips that you would offer to them right now? Well, um, if you haven't spent it yet, the first thing I would say, start an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. Use it to start an emergency fund uh, so that when life happens to you, you don't necessarily have to use um, a, a loan or, or borrow or whatever the case may be. The other thing would be actually pay down some of that debt. You know, um, um, take it and address some things that, that need to be addressed instead of just spending it. And then we also, we don't just include things like that, Quentin. We want to make sure that there's a balance. And so, yes, do something fun with a little bit of it, but don't use all of it to have fun with. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And I want to go back to last Saturday. Obviously, you had your annual, now, and it's a very notable one, uh -huh. the Money Fair. Yes. And obviously, you had that at Royal Life Center. Uh -huh. When you look back at that to now, what still plays in your mind about that? Well, what plays in my mind about that is the fact that we actually launched, we officially launched the D-Free 
program and curriculum that's going to happen in the community. It is a lifestyle movement that we are going to do in the Tri-County area to help individuals deal with debt. And so the name of that campaign is Down With Debt and Up With Hope. You're going to hear a lot about that and you're going to see a lot of that in the coming weeks. weeks. Yeah. When you, t- you talk a lot about debt through this particular conversation here, what is the average debt in Charleston County when you think of it? Well, I don't know per se for Charleston County, but I can tell you the U.S. American debt. And this is just consumer debt. Okay. There's an average of between fifteen to 20000 per household. And so it's quite extensive. And also the, 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 um, the stats of how many of Americans are, are 90 days behind on their debt, how many of us have... Uh, delinquencies on our credit report, how many of us use uh, over 70% exceed their limit on their credit cards, which is impacting their credit score. And so the reason why we're talking so much about debt, Quentin, is because it impacts us so heavily that if we if we didn't have the debt, we could potentially become a homeowner. Yeah. If we didn't have the debt, we could maybe save more. If we didn't have the debt, we could maybe prepare for our children's college education. There's so much more that could be done with that money if we weren't paying it out in debt every month, the debt payments. Oh, gosh. And what else are you looking at when you think of debt? Well, when we think of debt, I, I just think of the stronghold that it is in our community. It's, it's, it's chains wrapped around us, you know, and um, uh, it's causing us not to walk in a level of financial freedom. So basically, we are bound. We are in slavery to com- consumer debt. And, you know, we need to look at it that way because it's that powerful in our lives. We can't do what we want to do because we're enslaved to debt payments. We can't do what we want to do because we can't choose uh, how we want to spend our money. We have to pay it to the creditors. Okay, so it's a powerful stronghold in our community. And that is why I am so, um, uh, so strongly wanting to get the word out about down with debt and up with hope. Because if we're going to increase in our hope, we got to get free from the debt. That's right. Exactly right. And I know that just recently you are should obviously launch what you taught from your book, uh-huh. Kingdom Conscious Money Management. Uh-huh. Money management. Uh-huh. How do you look to God for that? Oh, my goodness. We there. First of all, it's 2,350 scriptures Ooh. that talk about money and management. We are called to be good stewards. And one of the things I I advocate for is the fact that you can't separate who you are and how you manage your money from who you are as a child of God. They go together. Many times he will use money to grow us up in him. Because if he can get a hold to our pocketbooks, that means he can get, he has a hold to our hearts. And so many times, um, kingdom conscious money management just talks about making sure that the way we manage our money is lining up with the kingdom of God, lining up with the word of God, and that we're more focused on building this kingdom than building our kingdom. Increasing hope. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? It means to me, and hope is an acronym for, first of all, is helping others prosper economically. And uh, when I wake up or when I get up, that's my sole mission and my sole purpose. That's the call that's been placed on my life. That's the mandate from God. And so the decisions that I make every day in reference to this organization, it's not about me. It's about helping others. It's about impact in this community, making a difference in the in the lives of individuals. It's about helping people be able to pass along generational wealth instead of generational poverty. Yeah, exactly right. You, you talk about those individuals. What's that one person that's still in your heart and mind today? It's, it's the individual just who is sick and tired of being, of sick, being sick and tired. That person who has finally reached that breaking point. Where they're, said, where they're saying, I'm tired of getting the same results. I'm ready to do something different. I'm ready to deal with those obstacles that have kept me from making good financial choices. And, I, and I'm drawing the line in the sand and I'm not crossing back. I'm not looking. I'm not looking back. I am going to begin to make better choices, better decisions. I'm going to have better behavior. And I'm going to address the obstacles that I've had that are keeping me from advancing in the area of my finances. And I know, obviously, Increasing Hope is going on for 14 years. Yes. In the next 14 years, what do you hope to do next? Uh, We will be a one-stop shop, top-of-mind community resource for individuals who want to build, gain, and maintain assets in their lives. Mm -hmm. You you talked earlier about the community. Who's hurting most financially these days? Is it African-American or is it Caucasians? Um, 
statistics say, and the numbers don't lie, I always say that, it is definitely the African American community. And many times uh, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not because of uh, what's being done to us, it's what we're doing to ourselves. Many times we are the biggest um, um, enemies, we're enemies of ourselves because of the decisions that we've made, because of the lifestyles that we choose to live, because we're the population of the community that is most uh, advertised to, consumerized to, because they know, oh, they'll go out and buy it. We spend our money, but it doesn't stay in our own community. And so those are things that we need to look at, and those are some of the reasons why. And of course, the lack of education, the lack of knowledge, and just, just not having sometimes an understanding of how does money work? Um, but by far, the African-American community is most greatly impacted by uh, high levels of debt and consumerism. How does money work? How does money work? Um, money, it works by understanding that it can either work for you or against you. Uh, for instance, Einstein says that compound interest is the most powerful force in the universe. And so if you have a lot of debt, I will use that as an example, then compound interest is working against you because that debt is accruing interest. We start out by owing maybe $450, and by the time we pay those minimum payments for 18 months, we've paid $900, okay? So how money works is that if I'm saving that money, though, that same compound interest can be working for me. My $100 or $200 that I put in the bank is now valued at three or $400 because that's just how money works. It's going to work for you. It's going to work for me. But I have to understand how it works. I have to understand the power that it has. And I have to understand that the choices that I make are the most important things. And we have to be consistent and deliberate uh, in making good decisions. And that will change the results we're getting with our finances. How does African American people keep money in their community? Well, by using our local our local stores. By number one, by by saving, um, and, and using small business owners in the local community, and also just by making sure that you take the time to invest in areas that are important to your community. That's another way to keep money in our community. And what are those areas right now? Well, I think one of some of the areas are, 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 again, the local small businesses to know who they are, our mom and pop stores and shops and different things like that. Those are areas, maybe even using the services of individuals that have companies or business that are outside of our community, but are maybe owned by either African-American uh, community business owner. Those are various ways that we can do that. And, you know, obviously, when you think of money, you think of plans. What is the plan that people need to have now? The biggest plan I think that people need to have, and one that will begin to break the cycle of poverty, is a plan for savings. Have an emergency fund. We're now in the spring. It won't be long, and uh, storm season will be upon us. We know this in the Charleston area. Why don't we prepare and plan for it a little bit better? Have that emergency fund. Have enough money to get out of the area if you need to. Have money for gas. Have money for that mortgage payment or rent payment. Because if we're out for a week or if we're out for a month or whatever the case may be, how well have you planned for this storm that we know is going to come through Charleston? Dorothea Bernie, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. Thank you for having me, Clinton. Anytime. Awesome. Yes, ma'am.